All right, let's collect data for our redox titration on the analysis of bleach lab. So before we began, I did a couple of things. The first thing is I loaded my burette with our um, sodium thiosulfate solution. So that's 0 0.0500 molar sodium thiosulfate. And the other thing I did is I took our bleach and I, um, a little bit of it, and I diluted it. So um, I diluted 1.56 grams of bleach to a total volume of 100 cubic centimeters with deionized water. And it's the diluted solution that we are going to titrate. So I am going to, uh, into my conical flask, pipette 10 cubic centimeters of this bleach solution with a volumetric pipette. And when we use a volumetric pipette, we uh, just let the solution drain from the pipette. We don't push it out um, because these are made TD to deliver 10 cubic centimeters. And it means there will always be a little bit of solution stuck in the tip, but that's okay. That's all. Um, that's the way it's supposed to be. All right. Next, I am going to add to my flask first a little uh, magnetic stirrer, and then next, a couple of cubic centimeters of uh, 3 molar H2SO4. This is to acidify the solution, so I'm just uh, using my little graduated pipette here. It doesn't have to be super precise. Just need some hydrogen ions in there. And then the next thing I'll add is some 1.5 molar Ki. Um, and when I add this, let me put it up here, we will see um, the difference between a redox titration and an acid-base titration. Right? The minute I add, the second I add that Ki, we see a drastic color change. Um, that's because the iodide ions are reacting to form iodine, I2, and that has that characteristic brown color in solution. So the big difference is that a lot of times in a redox titration, the species are colored, so we don't need like an uh, um, indicator in the same way we do in an acid-base titration. All right, so I gave that a rinse. I'm going to turn on my stirrer. All right, and let's get an initial volume here. Initial volume is 11.91 cubic centimeters. Now I'm going to start adding the thiosulfate to the flask. And what we'll notice here is as we add more thiosulfate, the color starts to lighten up a little bit. And we're going to continue adding thiosulfate until we get to a light yellow color. So right now it's looking a little orange-brown. It's lightening up. It seems a little more golden now. Right, so looking for yellow. And then at light yellow, I'm going to stop for a second. Let's slow this down a little bit. Let me just give a quick wash to everything in here. Make sure everything's down there. Okay, now a little bit more slowly, looking for that light yellow color. Okay, so this iodine fades, um, the color fades to light yellow, and then it would go colorless. But it'd be really, really hard for us to judge when the color completely faded. So at this light yellow point, I'm going to add a little bit of starch. And what that does is it forms a complex um, with the iodine that's there that has um, a really dark color. Right? You might recognize this as the test that you use for starch in biology. Um, and this will make that, uh, that last little bit of iodine uh, reacting uh, easier to see when, every, when we reach the um, end point here. So. Now I'm going to be careful, and I'm just going to let this go in drop by drop. And again, color starting to lighten. It's kind of a light purple. And we're getting close now. 
Alright, so stop here and see. Yeah, looks pretty good. Oh, I have a little hanging chad there. Alright, and we are finished. Let's go ahead and get our final volume. Looks like we're at about 29.60 cubic centimeters. Alright, there you go.